Hello, welcome to this channel Gain Java Knowledge and today in this video we are going to learn how to log request body and response body in log statements without adding log statement in each API business logic. So this thing will be handled by our filter class will be responsible to print log statement for each API. And this approach will be useful to reduce course of lines. So we no need to add log statements in each API because if we are using filter class then no need to add common log statement in each API. Common log statement like request body, response body, response status code these are the common log statements that we can print using filter classes. So today these common things will be logged by using our common filter class. So okay let's start and first we will create one simple spring boot project. So here I have already created one simple spring boot project and here I have created one controller class and here we can see inside our controller class I have not printed or added any log statement. So once I will start this application here we can see our service layer. Inside service layer I have just written the, written the list of students. So here we can see we have not added any log statements. So now I will just start the application. So here we can see our application has started port number 8080 and here we can see inside our controller class there is one rest endpoint that is slash student will be the URL. Now here I will go to browser and here I will just type localhost 8080 slash students. So here we can see the list of students here. Now I will go to console in Eclipse and will check the logs because we have not added any logs so here we can see there is no log printed on console so now I will clear it and again hit this rest endpoint and again we will go to console and here we can see no logs on the console now what we will do now we need to print request body and response body in logs without adding log statement in our controller class. So what I will do, I will just create one filter class that will handle all things. So here I will just create one new class inside new package. So here I will define the package name dot filter and here I will define our filter class name logging filter click on finish so here we can see our class has created so this is the logging filter class so here I will extend this class with once per filter class once per request filter and here we just need to define annotation at the rate component. So our container will create the bin for this. Now we need to add unimplemented method inside this class that is to filter internal. And here we are just using once per request filter it will execute only once for each request. So here we can see filter based class that aims to guarantee a single execution per request on any servlet container. So for every request this method will execute once do filter internal. So here we need to write our logic that will handle each request and response and will print inside our log statements. So here I will what I will do here I will just create the content caching request and content caching re response object. So content caching request wrapper
is equal to new content caching request wrapper and here I will just pass our request object so here we can see it is a wrapper around the original HTTP request object when we read the request body content caching request wrapper caches the content for later usage so it will store it same thing we will do for our response object so here I will create content caching response wrapper and here I will pass the response object so it will wrap our response object for later usage so after wrapping these objects request and response so why we are using content caching request wrapper and content caching response wrapper because this class provides a method that is get content as byte array to read the body multiple times if we are not using then we can wrote not read the request and response body multiple times so after wrapping both request and response object and we also print the log time time taken by any api we can use long start time system dot current time milliseconds so we will also print the time taken by any api so we can check the performance of our api and here i will just copy filter chain and here i will call do filter method and here we need to pass our content caching request wrapper and content caching response wrapper object now here we need to get the request body and response body in string form so here what i will do here i will just create one variable request body and we'll also create one method so we will return the string value of our request body and response body and here we just need to pass request wrapper So here I will just copy content caching request wrapper. So here we need to call method get content as byte array. Get content as byte array. So here we can see get content as byte array. And from our HTTP servlet request, we need to get character encoding. So with these two parameters we can get the our request body in the form of string. So here we need to create this method that is get string value. So here I will go create get string value method and here we have created one private method and inside this method we just create one string object and will return as a response so here we need to pass our content as byte array content as byte array and our offset value will be zero that will be permanent and here we need to find the length of our content as byte array length and next we need to pass our character encoding so it will convert into string value character encoding so it will throw an exception that we need to handle so here we will just surround with try catch and next we can return one empty string here So here we will get our request body like this we also need to get response body if you want to print in log statement so here i will just define response body and here we just need to use the second object get content caching response wrapper object and here we will choose response dot get character encoding so here we can see here we are using get content as byte array method 
to read the request and response we can also use some other method like this there are few methods get input stream but if we are using that method to read the request body then in our controller class we will not get the response body or request body because if we are using get input stream then only we will get request body only once and inside our controller class we will get null or empty object so if you want to read the request body multiple times then we must need to use get content as byte array method so here we will get request body and response body now we just need to print inside our logger so here i will create one logger object logger is equal to logger factory and here we just need to pass our class and here we will use cell for j logger that is org dot cell for j package and here we can define it say private static final so it will be not change and now we need to print our request and response body in logs for each api so it will handle our filter class and here i will just define logger info so filter final filter logs here we can define and here we can print the method name our http method is get or put and we can also print request uri of our api and next we can define our response body and request body request body response code we can also print for each api we will get the response code response status code so we can print also request and response body and uh, we can also print the total time taken by api so here i will just define time taken by api in execution so here i will just print long time taken and here system dot current time in milliseconds minus start time so it will get the time taken by any api so here i will just print method that is request dot get method that will be our http method get put post delete what we are going to execute and next we will define request dot get request uri and request body and next response dot get status so it will print the status code 200 500 400 what we are getting from our api that will be print and now we will print response body and the next total time taken by any api in complete execution so we can check the performance of our api so here we just need to replace with comma and next what we need to do we just need to call our response wrapper object response wrapper that is content caching response wrapper caching response wrapper dot copy body to response copy body to response so what will do this method this method will copy the complete cached body content to our response object so it will again add it to this response and we will get in our api so now our filter class has been ready now we will just start the application and we'll check 
if slopes are getting printed for our controller or not so now i will just start this application so our application has already started so need to stop it and start it again so here we can see our application has started now i will clear the locks and go to browser again and here i will refresh this endpoint and now i will go this is get api so there will be no request body so we can check the response body in the logs so here we can see our filter logs are getting printed method is get and here we can see the request uri that is slash student and request body was empty because this is get api and in response code we can see 200 and inside response body we can see the list of student that is one two and three students and total time taken by 376 milliseconds so like this we can use the common filter class to handle the logs for each api then we no need to worry about and think about our controller class we need no need to add logs in all api we just need to create common filter and it will handle all the api request and response body so okay thanks for watching this video